welcome to the Rock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to the Rock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. And for this episode, I have two interviews from my archives that I conducted with Matthias Jabs, the guitarist from the legendary hard rock band The Scorpions. The first interview in this episode was recorded on April 2nd, 2010, shortly after the release of the Scorpions' Sting in the Tail record. The second interview was conducted on August 30th, 2007, to promote the Scorpions' Humanity Hour One release. I hope you enjoy listening to my conversations with Matthias. He's one of my favorite guitar players, and he has a very unique style. So here he is, Matthias Jabs of the Scorpions. Hey, Matthias. Hey, how are you doing today? Great. My first question I have for you is, um, how gratifying is it that uh, Sting in the Tail chart is so high all over the all over the world? Uh, you were number one in Greece, Germany, number two in Korea, number th- six in Russia, six in Finland. How does that feel? I feel it's fantastic. I mean, at this uh, point in our career, um, we couldn't expect anything like that, and. Uh, uh, but therefore, you know, it feels especially like rewarding, like being over here. And you know, we landed yesterday. We came in the afternoon yesterday from Germany, uh, and the first thing I, I read, like via mail at, at night, is, "Wow, you're like a classic rock charts number one with a song." So I go, "Wow, that's cool," because we haven't had those um, experiences in the, let's say, the last ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, we had successful albums all over, but you know, never really. Uh, like high chart positions, and therefore it feels great. Yeah, you were uh, number 23 in the United States, and that's the highest you've been in, in 20 years. So, I mean... I know. It, Amazing if you think about it. <laughs> it, it really is, and um, I mean, it's such a great CD. Um, and, and during the recording of the CD, was there a point where you realized, hey, we, we're, we're really onto something very special here? Yes, but I can tell you, it felt good overall. We, the way we recorded this album, something I can recommend to everybody, at least to touring bands, we started like in May of last year. We, uh, you know, sat together with the producer team, Michael and, and Martin from Sweden, and we selected songs. We had a few songs which, uh, you know, we already had for recent albums but never used them. We rearranged those, we wrote a couple of new ones, and then uh, we went on tour. We went on tour throughout the summer of last year, like two and a half months in Europe, a couple of shows in, uh, I don't know where we were. But uh, then we came back, uh, like in August, and is, you know, really started working on the songs. Then we played a few shows again. Then we went back to the studio, sometimes in Sweden, sometimes in our place, because we arranged that, you know, Sometimes we meet at this studio or the other one in Stockholm where the guys are from. And uh, so it was like never, you sit in the studio and it takes forever. It always felt fresh. And then after a week or 10 days, we said, okay, see you in two weeks. We go out and play a couple of shows. And towards the end, when the album was really shaping up and we were, oh, let's put it this way, we were already done with the recordings. And uh, then, you know, the, the, we invited people to listen to the rough mixes. And then everybody really had heard the whole thing. Uh, then, uh, you know, we went like, wow. <laughs> the record company guys from over there and our management is the one who said, you know, guys, the next day he said, you know, you th- should think about to call this your last album. It's really a great one. And then followed by a world tour, which usually takes two and a half years for us, because we play everywhere. And with this last tour now, it might be three years. Uh, he said, this is a great way to end a career on a high note. And so we, we thought about it, not for too long. And then we decided, yes, the guy is right. It's a good good way of, uh, you know, thinking. And uh, then we uh, make, made the announcement in January that this would be the last studio recording and the last tour for the Scorpions. And so therefore... Uh, the album has nothing to do with it. We record it the way like we always do. You know, let's record and let's have fun and it was easy and, uh, you know, we just followed no concept, no deep lyrics. We just, you know, just uh, it was flowing naturally. So we had great fun in the studio and no heavy thoughts. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely pays off. I mean, the, the, the CD is so cohesive, and um, it, it's just, I, I really think it's your, your best work may, maybe ever. I mean, I, I really think, you know, song for song, it may be the best Scorpions record ever recorded. Maybe. Uh, me, it re reminds me, and the producers, you know, they, you must imagine they were like fans uh, from this band, like since the early 80s. And they were exactly like, the, the, let's say the average fan or the majority would go, if you ask them, and we did, what's your favorite album? The answer is to 95% or 99% is like Blackout and Love at First Sting. Right. This, the early 80s where I think the band found finally the, their sound, their style and the, the sound. The, like Love at First Sting is probably the essence of the Scorpion sound, if you want to call it like this. And uh, Sting of the Tail probably comes closest to Love at First Sting and could have been. Now, looking back, you know, it wasn't, wasn't intentionally done like this. It wasn't planned. But now, looking back, it could have been the follow-up album. Yeah. In the 80s. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Definitely. Now, let, let me ask you a question about this, this uh, about the Scorpions uh, deciding to retire after, um, in, after the tour that you're going to do in three years. Now, with you being a bit younger than... Um, Rudolph and uh, Klaus, did you, you know, did you, were you a little bit more reluctant because, you know, you're, you're still young. You have a, a, at least another 15 yeah. years where you could do it. Oh, no, 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 not reluctant. I mean, it makes total sense, this whole thing. And uh, even though if I would have been, it would have made a difference, I guess, you know, because I can't change their age. Yeah. Of course I'm young. I would have never come up with that thought. But same with Klaus and Rudolph. They say the same thing. We would have never thought about this. We would have treated this like as if it was like ongoing forever. But you know, if somebody from the outside, it probably it takes somebody like this who has like a different perspective. He would like he'd tap you on the shoulder and remind you, hey, it can't go on like this forever. And what it convinced me is that I, same like the other guys, we want to be remembered as the Scorpions that are a great live band, and they are, they, they can jump around, run around, and full of energy. They are healthy and fit. That's how we want to be remembered by the fans. Mm -hmm. and not like growing old in the spotlight, literally speaking. You know, like, okay, this one guy's limping around, the other one's like just standing still in front of his cabinet. We don't want this. You know, blues musicians, they can sit on a chair like B.B. King and play when they're 80. I'm sure I will always make music. Whatever comes next, I don't even want to like dig too deep at the moment. i rather like concentrate on the upcoming tour. I will enjoy it. And then what comes after, you know, we we probably have, like, lots to do t together even, you know, with all the whatever comes after the end of the career. You know, there's still the albums sold and downloads, and, you know, we still have, we have to keep our office in our warehouse, and then, we, you know, we'll still be together. Yeah. But we will not, uh, like, do what we've been doing for the last almost 35 to 40 years, like make a CD go on tour, come back, make a CD, go on tour. You know, we want to break out of this cycle. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what, what about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Do you, uh, I mean, a lot of fans think you belong in there. Um, how do you feel about it? Is that, is, would that be a big deal to you? Or? I think it would be a very big deal. And uh, my feeling is they will approach us. Uh, we just got like news, they have like an 80s exhibition. They want some stuff like memorabilia, instruments and whatever. And that's the first sign. But first, before we do that, we do like the rock walk, Hollywood's rock walk on uh, the upcoming Tuesday uh, on the Sunset Boulevard, the guitar center related one where you put your hands into the concrete. But I think the Hall of Fame, I mean, it would be, yes, well deserved. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it will probably happen. Yeah, I, I, it better happen. That's all I got to say as a fan. Yeah. Um, a question I've been dying to ask you for as, as long as you've been in the band is, how did you develop your unique guitar tone? I mean, your guitar tone is such a big part of the sound of the Scorpions. Um, how, how did you come up with that? Was, was it natural, or did you really labor to get that particular sound that you have? Um, I mean, I, I keep it simple. Uh, I'm not uh, putting any effects between my guitar and the amp. It's usually like... Whatever model of guitar I'm playing, uh, there's a cable going into the amp that goes into the speaker, and then you mic the speaker right, and the, the rest is in the fingers. The producer said the same thing. 
like whatever I give you, it always like you know sounds like you immediately. It must be in the fingers, but you know I keep it simple so that you can tell which guitar it is and and how it can like dynamically like like the like play with the with the sound and the tone and and everything. If you use like foot pedals and all that crap, uh, then you know it gets lost. Your your fine technique like uh, will never uh, shine through. So I keep it simple. That's my my well-known secret, but um, yeah, thanks very much, and uh, whatever I play, I play a lot too, you know, I play most of this, the guitars on every Scorpions album, and especially on the last one, I even put down the rhythms first, and then I work on the overdubs, I do the guitar arrangement, and I play the leads last. By mm -hmm. the time I play the leads, the song is already, like, has its sound, and uh, yeah, so that's how I do it. I have my, in case you're interested, I developed my own amp throughout the last couple of years. And it's the first time I, re I tested it in the last two years on tour, so it's reliable now. Oh, it has been, but you know, I've, I've just uh, played it for the last two years on the road, not talking about it, but I use it now in the studio, and it's called Master Tone. And it, it's my own brand, and I have my own amp, and it really does exactly what I like. You know? So that helped a little bit for the last album. Yeah, so if I get that, I'll sound just like you? <laughs> Yeah, it, it might take a few other things. The one yeah. that before with the fingers and stuff, and the way you know you hold the tone. It, you know, you can test yourself by using an acoustic guitar. If you make an acoustic guitar sound great, you will also make an electric guitar sound great because there you you get an immediate response from how you touch the strings. It's a combination of left and right hand, but some people just have. Not a sound; they just like twang away. Yeah, I mean, some some of the great Maybe guitarists are about like. It. Yeah, some of the great guitarists are like that, and and you're definitely one of them. I mean, your your sound, you can always tell it's you, and you have this uh, amazing tone with no effects. I mean, it's it's just it's it's it, that's I think that's the reason that the Scorpions are as popular as they are. I really, I love your guitar tone. I really do. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I have so many questions. I just want to crank through these so I can get them all in. What, what, what do you consider your greatest uh, accomplishment or moment as a member of the Scorpions? I think the most important part is that <clears throat> when I joined with my play, my sound, like uh, stuff, for example, like a No One Like You, like a double harmony lead as an intro or as in, within the solo, this kind of stuff I've already been doing at the, in the local bands where I played before. So I brought this in, 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 like in addition to what they had, but I think since I joined, we sound like a unit, we sound like one band, and all of a sudden we, we started being, or well, becoming very successful. And uh, until today, I treat the, my guitar playing and the song, and you know, I, I really play most of it, but I use it, like even the leads, just to enhance the song. I think that's the most important part. Like if you play, like even if you play solo guitar, uh, just uh, you know, try to to keep the level of the song. Let it not fall down or, or play something which doesn't really belong there. I'm always trying to enhance the song with everything I do, and that's why I think, like style-wise, we we sound much more compact since I joined. Yeah, and 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 another compliment I have to throw at you um, is that. You know, throughout the years, with all the different types of, like, you know, different guitar gymnastics and, and techniques that came out, you, you never, like, uh, fell to the fad. You just, like, stuck to your guns. You know, you didn't start, like, you know, playing, like, Yngwie Malmsteen, or you didn't start doing, like, massive taps like Eddie Van Halen or anything like that. You're always true to your own original sound without taking any of that other stuff in there. So, I mean, I, I think yeah, that... Yeah, I think, I think if, the, if the others are doing it already, why should I do it? Um... I'm not exactly in a cover band, and uh, yeah, that's for sure. But uh, you know, of course, I experimented uh, with like various techniques in the late '70s, early '80s as well. And you know, I'm I'm capable of doing most of them. But to me, as I said, it's like much more important to you know stick to my own style while you know like serving the song, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I, I know this is, uh, you know, you don't want to think about this right now because your your focus is on the Scorpions. But I mean, could you possibly see yourself doing like a, a, a solo, like instrumental, you know, CD sometime in your career? You think? 
Uh, actually, I thought about it, like many times, and I've been like addressed with this like since 20 years. <laughs> and so far, I focused on like scorpions, scorpions, 24 hours a day. That is the like, the only way to go, and we are all like this. Nobody did a solo album, by the way. And um, I can imagine various things, but somehow in the back of my mind, I think I let this these thoughts like grow while we are on tour for the next two and a half to three years. And by the time like we really finished then I will have a much better sense for what is right for me to do and what not. At the moment, you know, I can only, and I don't want to, like, waste too much energy assuming things, but I, for some reason, think there must be a way to do it better, to do something better than a solo album. I don't know exactly what that means now. It, it You know, it will be uh, a new way. A solo album was already, like, 30 years ago. People did solo albums, instrumental albums. I have the feeling it will add another dimension to it, and then we see what happens. Very cool. Um, is there anything that you still want to accomplish uh, in the Scorpions? Um, I mean, it's, it's sad, but we haven't played Australia yet. Really? And so we have to fit that in. <laughs> we call this the five continent tour, so where's the fifth continent? It's Australia. And so we have to play this, no, definitely, and uh, we played all the other continents, and... Uh, you know, and I just, you know, biggest achievement is stay healthy and, you know, in, enjoy the tour and uh, everything else will come automatically if you, like, look at things with a, like, very positive attitude. And I think you know, this last album proves it. You know, we just had such a wonderful time in the studio, like, stress-free, so to speak, and I think you can hear it and the rest seems to come automatically, like success and whatever it takes, you know, you don't have to try too hard, just do something you're convinced of and then it works. Yeah. Um, back back to the CD, I kind of skipped around on my questions a bit here, but back to the CD, um, why did you decide to record um, the record with uh, Anderson and Hansen and not with uh, Desmond Child that you used for uh, Humanity Part 1? Um, we, uh, Desmond is a guy... You know, he's like known for being like a hit uh, producing uh, producer. That's why we went with him like three years ago here in Los Angeles. But, um, you know, he made us like follow his concept too much. He put like a producer stamp on the Scorpions like too much. I like the album. I like what we've done. But uh, the Swedish guys, whom we, we you know, were originally going to record the previous album, but then decided for Desmond, it was their turn now. And uh, and also they you know they enhanced what uh, we tried to do instead of trying to bend it out of shape. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it was more like a unit. Uh, the, the producers and us. It was more or less like a band with seven people, rather mm -hmm. than producer on one side, band on the other. Yeah. Was was it um, a bit uncomfortable working with Desmond because of that? No. But uh, I think it was more uncomfortable for, for Klaus, the singer, because Desmond is so, like, meticulous or whatever the word is for, like, his lyrics. And, and, you know, he's, like, very much into lyrics. He liked me and my guitar playing, so I didn't have any, any problems. But uh, I mostly recorded with James Michael anyway, who was the co-producer. Right. And, uh, so that was, like, the, I had the easier part. But, you know, obviously it's not so easy to work with him if you're, uh, like, a singer-lyricist, because that is his main main thing, but Scorpions are a guitar band, mm -hmm. right singer, and you got to pay attention to that, and then the result will be much better. Yeah. Uh, now, now, one of the songs I find very interesting on the CD um, is uh, Sting in the Tail, that beginning vocal part where um, it's it's really hoarse. Um, wh whose idea was that? I mean, it works it works brilliantly in the song. Uh, Klaus said it when he was, um, it was like, we recorded most of the stuff in our studio, that's like very close to where Rudolph lives. So Klaus and I, we live like more or less like in, in one street. It's like crawling distance. And <laughs> so we, we took a car every day uh, to our studio. And uh, it's like a 20 minutes ride. And uh, so when you sit in the car, you know, you, when you're not on the phone, you, you have you use your time to be inspired and you come up with ideas, which you, you're not going to do in the studio, like just minutes away. And he had the idea while driving, this and it was like without words. Yeah. It was then turned into bang, bang, rock with a gang. But he had, he had the sound in his ears. 
and that's what came out. Yeah, I mean that, that's uh, you know when I first heard that, it kind of it was really kind of surprising, but it fits so well into well, the song. It's like a sound effect, but it's basically just voices. Yeah, I mean it sounds like it's rough on his voice. I, I hope he doesn't blow his voice out uh, doing that no, song no, no. live. Uh, to me, he was singing like better than uh, like in the last twenty years on this album. He sounds great. Yeah, he, he does. Sound... And we, we we opened the show with that song so far. Oh wow! Cool. You know, we, we already played a few shows just to test everything, the production, and everything, and uh, so we opened with "Sting of the Tail." It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we're down to our last minute. I just want to um, say say thank you very much for taking your time. I mean, I've been a big fan of yours, um, you know, since 1980, and, and it's a real honor to talk to you. I love the CD. I think it's great. Um, you guys are going out on tour. You're, you're playing North America. Um, can, can you shed some light on what bands you're going to be bringing out um, to support? Um, you guys? Uh, it's talk like Cinderella and Red, uh, like alternating. Some in this part. We start, um, I think, the 18th of June in uh, New Jersey. They play New York, the East Coast, and go up to Eastern Canada and then come back down Midwest and then, you know, Florida, Texas. We go all over the place. And um, I think we finish somewhere on the West Coast. I don't have the, uh, I can't represent the, the schedule yet. Right, yeah. Uh, but we have Cinderella in some parts and Red in some parts and uh, maybe a band I don't know about yet. Yeah. Oh, that that's great that you're bringing out other bands like that because so many, you know, bands try to bring out newer bands and, you know, I mean, I, I want to see, like, another band from the 80s, you know. I want to see of a different bill. Thanks again, Matthias. Hey, Thomas. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Matthias. Matthias, how you doing? Hi Thomas, I'm doing fine. How are you? That's good. Are you doing a lot of press today? Uh, it's okay. Just a couple. I see. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to um, congratulate you on this amazing new record. Yes, it feels very good actually. Mm -hmm. You know, it is usually we are quite happy when we leave the studio, and we don't leave it if we're not happy. But you know, that that varies. Uh, looking back, sometimes you go, oh, I could have done this better and this better. But this album is for us. It's like out since um, since uh, May, <coughs> since it came out in Europe much earlier, and I still like to listen to it. And I think that's a very good sign. Yeah, this this album is uh, something that you really have to listen to from uh, from the track one to the very last track. I mean, it's a very profound record. How difficult was it organizing all the tracks to make it so it was so cohesive? Um, we were. Um, thinking about before we even went to Los Angeles, before we even contacted Desmond Child, we were thinking about what could we do the next time, since it's like, you know, not exactly our first album. Uh, what can we do this time? You know, we went through, um, you know, the crossover project, the Acoustica project, project, which is not even released over here, but one day maybe. And, uh, you know, so we've been uh, doing Unbreakable, which is the previous album, back to our style. And uh, so we were sitting there, what do we do? And the word concept album came up just because we hadn't done any. And um, so when we met Desmond Child in Los Angeles, the first thing he said was, you guys should do a concept album. And we were laughing because, you know, we hadn't told him that we had the same thought. And I don't think you can really call it a concept album, what came out now, but it has a theme. And we were writing and thinking in the same like direction for this particular album. And actually that made things easier because if you know what you're writing about you know we had this, this discussion that went on for days and uh, then you know all the thoughts like went into the lyrics for each uh, individual song we had a couple more of course but in the end you know the way we put them together they fit quite well and so that uh, we realized it's easier if you know what to write about than if you just you know uh, just you know like fishing somewhere in the uh, in the blue and trying to come up with lyrics it's much easier this way and um, so things went relatively fast once we uh, once we were all like uh, in sync and uh, had the same opinion about what we wanted to do with Desmond and the co-producer James Michael mm -hmm. now is, um, on the, while we're on the subject of lyrics do you get involved in the uh writing of the lyrics at all? I mean, do they, like, accept your, like, input, or is it pretty much uh, Rudolph does it and, and Klaus does it? Um, this time it was all different. We were working with, like, uh, various teams. Desmond has his, like, this so-called, like, team of songwriters. He, he, he writes lyrics himself, like, you know, a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so does James Michael. Eric Bazilian, he's the guitar player, singer from the Hooters, who always 
works with them, and we work with him like on Unbreakable and and even before that. And Marty Frederiksen, Frederiksen is his name. Yes, he produces uh, produced at the time Aerosmith. He came over. We've been working with him in the late '90s for an album. And so, you know, everybody knew everybody, and so we were sitting together in various teams, songwriting teams, and working out the stuff, and then we all came back together and talked about it and, you know, and just discussed in which direction should it go, and some of the lyrics were changed until the very last minute, because uh, Desmond concentrated on, on recording the vocals, while the instruments were recorded uh, with uh, James Michael, once, you know, we had it all worked out, of course. So for the first four weeks, we were like everybody together in the SIR Rehearsal Studios LA and go for it. And once we knew what we were doing, we went to two different places. And the lyrics were changed, I think, you know, until a day before the last vocals were recorded. Wow. Now That's Desmond Child. Well, that uh, really is, it, it's, it, was that a lot different than the way you recorded your very first record with the Scorpions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot different. I must say, it was like very professional, very organized. I mean, we are very uh, organized ourselves now. You know, we are not exactly new in the business, and we know what to do. And we, we, you know, we play okay, and we play well, and you know, we know how to get the sounds. And we were like, t you know, taking our time this time though to really find the right sounds, especially guitar sounds, uh, for each individual song, and to give it like. Uh, not only like that people will recognize immediately this is the Scorpions album, but you know, we wanted to take it a step further, a step ahead, and we wanted to make it sound 2007. So, you know, not overdoing it, but give it enough touch and spice so it sounds current as well. Yeah. Which I think, you know, we, we managed to do quite well. You definitely accomplished that goal. Now, I want to talk about um, your, your uh, guitar work on it. W once again, it's like absolutely brilliant. Um, now, now you said that you uh, there was some influence by uh, James Michael on on the sound of the guitar. How how what could he possibly tell you to do differently than you've done all these years? Um, you know, it's like um, the the influence is like you, always when you sit with a producer in a studio. Every producer has a certain influence because you know he is there and he goes, okay, how about this? How about that? But basically, I know what I want to do. But if somebody is there especially when it's like a lot of guitars in one song and you know it's very important to find the different uh, sounds in terms of like frequency ranges so that they all like work together well and give it an overall like a full bodied sound if you have like too many guitars in terms of overdubs that have the same frequency then you can in the mix only do it by volume to make them different from each other mm -hmm. if they are frequency wise different then you can have them at the same volume, but they, they match each other and they, uh, you know, they, they just work together much better. So it took time, you know, the, the best microphones for an acoustic guitar and the, these kind of, like the detailed stuff, you know, but we really took our time this time. And uh, I think it paid off because it, the sounds are good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, was there, like, ever a, like a time during recording where you guys thought maybe... You did a little bit too much, where like you had like maybe too many layers on guitars or something like that, or did, it was a pretty consistent. Like every every take sounded pretty good, and you were able to move on. Oh, for the most part, uh, we had like you know since we we worked on the arrange arrangements first, and uh, that meant like we did like demo recordings as well. So we knew basically after the first four to six weeks exactly what we wanted to do. You're, uh currently on tour right now. You're doing a um, kind of like a, a small little leg of the United States, and then there's supposed to be a, a larger tour coming in uh, 2008 of the United States. Is that true? Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, we, at the moment, you know, the album's just released. We're here. The timing is good. We've been like uh, three months in Europe already. We will go on in uh, second half of, of October to Asia, to a couple countries. And... Um, and then there's some more shows in Europe, then the year's almost over. So, you know, we, you always try when an album is released to try to be everywhere simultaneously, which is, like, practically impossible. But you, you, you try to give it your best shot. And so uh, we think it's more, it's, you know, makes more sense to come around next year. And we have a new management in our Ace of Music, and they're planning, like, at least a 90 dates to in the States, starting in April, May or something. Wow. Now, is there uh, any talk about... Uh 
an opening uh, band yet. I mean, in the past, like you've you've had uh, Uli Roth and uh, Michael Shanker open for you guys. Is there any possibility you might do that again, or maybe not anymore? Because uh, uh, I mean, we had them in in England, and Uli was with us for a couple of shows, a couple of festivals in Greece and Sweden and France. And uh, I don't think it would be the right package for uh, America. Right. I don't think so. But, you know, we leave this up to the management to propose a few things, and I think they're probably looking more for, like, a younger band or two two younger bands. We don't know yet, but I'm sure it will be more like something something fresher than the old package. We've done that, like, all of this year, and I think that's enough now. Mm-hmm. Now, um, as far as you, do you kind of get tired sometimes of all the, uh, you know, talk about, like, you know, uh, Yuli Roth and Michael Shanker and how important they were to the Scorpions? I mean, if you look at the Scorpions' success, I mean, every single hit they've had was with you playing guitar on it. And it seems like, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people don't give you the credit that you, you probably deserve. I mean, you've been, like, a huge part of the success of this band ever since you started with them. I mean, uh, you know, we've been playing together now for, like, since last year. Last year we played the big Wacken Festival in North Germany, like 50, 60,000 people. There's a DVD going to come out, and yeah, we were all three on stage, and afterwards we were sitting together, and, you know, the one guy, Michael, he was in the band for, like, one and a half years, Uli for four and a half, and I'm for 29. And never mind for the successful time as well. So I think enough said. Yes. Very good. Okay, well, that's all I have for you. I just had uh, one more request I was wondering if you could do for me. Um, I was wondering if you could just um, uh, do a audio thing for my website. If you could just say, uh, this is Matthias Jabs from the Scorpions, and you're on glammetal.com. Could you do no, that? Of course, no problem. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hi, this is Matthias Jabs from the Scorpions, and you're on glammetal.com. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, Thomas. Thank right. you. And good luck on the tour, and hopefully we'll uh, catch up with you when you uh, get yeah, to Where work. are you calling from? What's your, your area code? Uh, Buffalo, New York, which uh, you guys, oh, yeah, right. you've kind of neglected us for a while, so I'm hoping that maybe we can get you here on the nine, on your uh, tour in 2008. Okay, cool. Okay, and, and thanks again. This has been an honor to interview you. I've been a fan of yours since 1979. Okay, I, thank you very and, much, Thomas. And you're the one who inf in inspired me to get my first Gibson Explorer, which I still have, by the way. Thank you very much for that. Very cool. All right, why don't you take it easy? Okay, you too, Thomas. Okay, okay bye. Bye-bye.